Hello friends, my name is Panindra. In this video, let us discuss about cord curve analysis. So, what is mean by cord, cord curve analysis? We have to have, we should have basic idea. So, what is mean by cord curve analysis? Cord analysis is a biochemical technique. It is a biochemical technique in which amount of repetitive DNA, how much amount of repetitive DNA uh, is present in a DNA sample. That uh, that uh, measurement can be done by cord analysis. Uh, how how the process takes place? Uh, first, you have to plot a graph. Then then we can know the value of how much how much amount of repetitive DNA is present in the sample DNA DNA sample. That is nothing but so. The uh, why it, um, what are the main uses of cord curve analysis? Uh, it is used to study genomic structure and organization. So what is meant by genomic structure and organization? Uh, for simply to say that genome structure mainly includes uh, pseudo genes, intergenic DNA, and it also includes lines signs. Lines means not not the not the drawing lines. Lines means L I N E S uh, long interplaced nuclear elements. Where whereas signs means short interplaced nuclear elements. All of this comes under genomic structure and organization. And coming to the procedure. So take the genomic DNA in the test tube. Take the genomic DNA. That is nothing but double stranded DNA. We have to take the double stranded DNA into the test tube. And now the test tube should undergo heating under the Bunsen flame. Then. Under, when it undergoes heating, then the double standard DNA will get converted into the single standard DNA, two single standard DNA. See here in the diag diagrammatic form, double standard DNA should be taken in the test tube and the test tube should get heated within the Bunsen flame and when it undergoes heating, then it mainly forms two single standard DNA. The whole process takes place uh, in the test tube itself, not outside the test tube, the whole process takes place inside the test tube. And this is the first point. So what is the first point? The genomic DNA which is double standard will get uh, inserted into the test tube and the test tube should get heated within the Bunsen flame and then when it undergoes heating the double standard DNA which we have took will get converted into single standard DNA to single standard DNA all this process occurs in the test tube itself this is the first point and coming to the second point uh, now now here the test tube is heated D due to that heat the double standard DNA gets converted into single standard DNA and that single standard DNA which is present in the test tube should go cooling should go cooling when it undergoes cooling, then what happens? The single standard DNA which is present in the test tube, which is present in the test tube, will get converted into the double standard DNA. Due to the due to the presence of the cooling, it gets converted into the double standard DNA. So this is also all the process occurs only in the test tube, but not outside the test tube, it occurs in the inside the test tube. So this is the second point. Next, what is the third point? Dilution of sample. The, the, the sample should get diluted after this both ex, after this both experiment conducting the sample should get diluted after the dilution what you have to take we have to take measurements uh, that uh, what measurements you have to take uh, how much amount of single standard dna is based by at each temperature so what do you understand by this point single standard dna it gets converted into the double standard dna by the base pairing in previous video i have explained that nitrogenous bases which mainly consists of purines and pyrimidines uh, that is purines includes adenine and guanine whereas pyrimidines include cytosine thymine and uracil all of that i have said you in the previous video and that the nucleated base pairs will get will get base paired with hydrogen bonds see here this is this is one this is one strand this is another strand this strand belongs uh, this strand consists of uh, nucleotides, some nucleotides, and this another strand co contains another nucleotides. And that the both the both nucleotides which are mainly present in the both the strands should get base paired with the hydrogen bonds. That that uh, amount that amount of how much amount of DNA gets base paired should be taken by this measurement. That is nothing but cord curve analysis. Measurements are taken that how much amount of single standard DNA is base paired at each temperature to form double standard DNA. Okay, this is the clarity of the point. Next, coming to the second, uh, next point, DNA binds to calcium hydroxide epitate CaOH2. So now, in the test tube itself, what you have to add calcium hydroxide epitate. You will get in the market. Uh, we have to add that in the test tube. Then what happens? The DNA that is nothing but double standard DNA. And during the experiment, some of the single standard DNA will not get converted into double standard DNA. It will left over in in the form of single standard DNA itself, but it will not get converted into the double standard DNA. So but uh, some amount 50 percent will get uh, double standard dna but 50 percent doesn't get converted into the double standard dna okay so the dna binds to calcium hydroxyl epitate caoh2 which we have taken in the test tube this dna both single standard dna double standard dna which is left over in the test tube will get convert will get uh, attached i mean will get bind to the calcium hydroxyl epitate we have to add that in the test tube then what happens after this process we have to do washing 
normally the test tubes which uh, the test tube contains uh, uh, contains materials like in this day like these particles will get uh, will get washed only by the buffers itself we have to not wash it with water we have to wash only with buffers so best example for the buffer we know that sodium phosphate uh, low rmr is nothing but low concentration and high rmr is den denotes high concentration denotes high concentration so low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer when you use low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer uh, for the washing for the washing purpose in this test tube then what happens is it eludes single stranded dna i have said you that bo both uh, single stranded dna will be left over and double stranded dna also will left over in the test tube some amount of dna 50% of dna will get converted into double stranded dna and 50% of dna will left over as a single stranded dna itself okay the, uh, here here the point will be utilized here see here low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer will elude first single stranded dna will elude single stranded dna whereas high concentration of sodium phosphate buffer elude double stranded dna so if you want to calculate double stranded dna so we have to use high concentration of sodium phosphate buffer so that you, we can obtain double stranded dna from the test tube itself uh, that is nothing but it it can be shown in the form of precipitates is at the below of the test tube it will form a precipitate and that precipitate is said to be as double stranded dna when we use the high concentration of sodium phosphate buffer okay now if we if we want single stranded dna then what we have to use low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer we have to use then it will use single stranded dna so now spectrophotometer the instrument which is mainly used to measure this uh, two solutions i mean this both of the solutions is spectroscope spectrophotometer this is only the instrument which can be used to measure the two solutions that is nothing but single stranded dna and double stranded dna which is mainly obtained by low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer and high concentration of the sodium phosphate buffer which is mainly used in the process of washing so this is about quark curve analysis so what first what we have done first we have took double stranded dna of genomic dna into the test tube and the test tube should be get heated with the bunsen flame and after heating what happens the double stranded dna which is present in the genomic dna which we have used will get converted into the single stranded dna this is the first point next coming to the second point and that uh, all of this process occurs in the test tube itself and the test tube should undergo cooling which contains the single stranded dna so what happens the single stranded dna will get converted into the double stranded dna by phase pairing also next after these two experiments conducting then what we have to do the sample should get diluted so what happens the measurement should be taken that how much amount of dna gets base pair that is nothing but nucleotides are present i have said you that purines pyrimidines nitrogenous bases where purines includes adenine guanine whereas uh, pyrimidines includes cytosine thymine and uracil all of these nucleotides so all of these nucleotides get base paired this, uh, this if you consider this a stand and this is b stand a stand consists of some nucleotides and b stand consists of another nucleotides all of these nucleotides and these nucleotides which are present opposite to each other should get bind with hydrogen bonds so uh, how much amount of dna gets bind with the help of hydrogen bonds should be measured should be measured and that measurement is considered as quark curve analysis next dna binds to the calcium hydroxyl epitate so ca calcium hydroxyl epitate should be inserted into the test tube itself then what happens the dna which is left over both the single stranded dna will left over and double stranded dna will also get left over so the dna which is present in the test tube both single stranded dna and double stranded dna will bind to the calcium hydroxyl epitate which we have used uh, by adding in the test tube next after this process we have to do washing uh, normally washing is done with the buffers itself but not with the water but the best example of buffers example sodium phosphate buffer B uh, both we have to take low concentration and high concentration where low rmr indicates low concentration and high rmr indicates high concentration where low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer eludes single stranded dna where high concentration of sodium phos uh, phosphate buffer eludes double stranded dna if we want double stranded dna calculation of double stranded dna then we have to use high concentration of sodium phosphate buffer in the test tube as it as as a buffer which is mainly used in the process of washing if we want single stranded dna the one we have to use we have to use low concentration of sodium phosphate buffer into the test tube next the instrument which is mainly used to measure the two solutions which is present in the test tube uh, that is nothing but both single stranded dna and double stranded dna is mainly done by the instrument known as spectrophotometer and this is about quark curve analysis and this question will be asked at the four marks in your degree examinations see here this is a graph uh, which will get obtained when you calculate the measurement uh, that is when you take the measurements of both single stranded dna and double stranded dna with the help of the instrument uh, spectrophotometer so this is the graph which you will get when you plot the graph thank you for watching this video if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i will clarify your doubts